I want you to um, observe this demonstration and listen to what it is that I'm saying. Throw, 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 throw. Throw, 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 throw. Now I can stop saying it because I've already developed the motor skill in my brain having practiced this many times. Most people when they're learning to juggle are taught to focus on something out there and uh, there's no real control over what that person is paying attention to and uh, it's very conscious. The thinking part of the brain, it needs to be kept occupied whilst you're trying to develop a motor skill because it's like an abacus compared to the supercomputer of your non-conscious brain which is responsible for all of the skills that you use to navigate through life. Learning a new motor skill like juggling, like swinging a golf club or like drawing a recurve bow require that you keep the conscious mind occupied and engaged whilst you're trying to develop the skill. The important thing about this is that by keeping your conscious mind engaged it can't interfere with the skill that you're trying to develop. Most people as adults are trying to think their way through the new skill, always thinking about what to do, where to put their body. It's simply interfering with the development of the skill. In the same way that I was saying throw, 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 to keep that conscious mind engaged so that I could just use my powerful awareness to start to recognize where my hands and body need to move to, I wasn't thinking about how to throw. Now, the same principles I'm going to teach you how to use them to draw a recurve bow. So rather than you being given a bow, being manipulated, showing how to grip the string, having to try and draw it, think about where the arrows are going, no one knows what you're focused on. It's chaos and you ultimately spend your life creating a disturbed motor skill. It will never set, it will never become trusted. This is what you must do for at least three weeks to, to a month before you start to shoot in order to develop a motor skill that you're going to eventually trust. I'm going to take you through the sequence just like I demonstrated the juggling. First of all, I make sure my state is correct. I get myself settled. I say to myself, this is prepare. This is raise. This is draw. This is expand. And this is release. I'll do it again. Prepare. Raise, draw, expand, release. Once I've started to learn and verbalize the commands, uh, they can become internal, so you actually are saying them to yourself rather than telling other people what you're doing. The important thing about developing this pre-shot procedure is it will be exactly the same procedure that you will be using when you start to shoot arrows. And you will keep your conscious mind engaged with each specific task, so at the moment of release, that conscious mind is quiet. Your eyes will be still and you'll be allowing the non-conscious brain to release the arrow rather than you trying to consciously manipulate it. So I'm going to take you through each step of this procedure from here through to here, through to here, through to there, and through to there. Because each step involves you understanding what it is that I'm paying attention to and so that you can also pay attention to the same thing. Training your brain whilst training your body. And that's most important. If all you do 
you think that you can treat your body as a machine, your mind will be allowed to wander and vary depending on whatever shot and place you're playing. It creates chaos. And oftentimes people look at their technique as the problem when all of the time it's their thinking brain that's creating the biggest problems in their archery. We've got to keep that thinking brain occupied up until the moment of performance, which is when the arrow gets released.